Ammonites are some of the most well-known fossils anywhere in, in the world. And at Lyme Regis, they've reached almost iconic status. Any day you walk around Lyme, you'll see ammonites used for advertising, you'll see them set in house walls and in all manner of places, the street lighting and on the backs of the local buses. And most people see the coiled shells of the ammonites and they think that they look like some sort of snail or other marine creature. They, they do come from out of the seas, but they're far more interesting than snails and things like that. We think ammonites are related to squids, octopuses, and if you know about it, the modern day Nautilus, and we think a living ammonite would look like this. So he'd have well-developed tentacles for catching his prey. He'd have a beak in the middle, the same as a squid or an octopus to tear the prey apart. And we also think they'd have well-developed eyes to see their food. But of course, none of the soft parts of the animal preserve. The soft parts get eaten or they rot away, but we know modern squids and octopuses have very well-developed eyesight. Chances are ammonites would have done the same in the past. And we also think under the ammonite's head, there'd be a little fleshy tube. And it used this tube to suck in water to get oxygen for the gills. And it would suck in the water, take out the oxygen, and same as you, it would have to breathe out and it would squirt the water back out again. And lo and behold, it's jet propelled, but it's moving in a very jerky, backwards fashion. And if you have a chance to look on YouTube on other sites, you'll see videos of Nautiluses today moving through the ocean in much the same way. Now, sadly, ammonites died out about 65 million years ago, the end of the Cretaceous period. We don't have a living ammonite here today, but if we did, if you chopped one in half along the middle, apart from getting a very annoyed ammonite, you'd get a wonderfully coiled chambered shell that would look something like this little ammonite here. And you can see the shell isn't an open spiral like a snail shell. It's divided inside into lots of small chambers. And all the small chambers inside would have been filled with gas and water. And a fleshy tube went right round to the middle of the shell. And the ammonite used these, this tube to control the amount of gas and water in each chamber. And in that way, it could move up and down in the water just the same as a modern Nautilus could. It could also, same as a submarine, alter the amount of gas in each chamber and it could alter the attitude that it sat at in the water and if it got punctured one or two chambers may flood it may put it at an angle but it wouldn't sink it to the sea floor and all the ammonite fleshy parts were just in the outer half two-thirds of a coil the structure of the ammonite tells you something as well about the way the ammonites are actually preserved at Lyme Regis and you weigh the way you see them in the local rocks Often they aren't preserved perfectly, but only part of the shell is actually preserved. When the ammonite dies, all the flesh rots away and eventually the shell sinks to the sea floor. It's then covered in layers of mud. The faster it's covered in mud, the less time the shell rolls around, the less it gets damaged and the better fossil you get. The finer the mud that covers the ammonite, the better the fossil you get. It records more detail, rather like fine pixel size on a camera. As the mud's building up on top of the ammonite, some of the mud washes into the outer coil. But the chamber walls inside prevent the mud going all the way around to the middle. So normally, only the outer half, two thirds of the shell fills with mud, all the rest of the ammonite is hollow. The weight of mud, builds up and builds up on top of the ammonite and eventually the weight gets so great that the center of the ammonite collapses and what you end up finding is something that looks like this with a wonderfully preserved outer half coil but nothing in the middle at all and if any of you have been out onto Monmouth Beach and seen the ammonites on the ledges and the pavements there you'll see a lovely ammonite going around but the center won't be there it looks more like an ornamental bird bath and that's to do with the structure of the ammonite. If you want a nice three-dimensional ammonite, something that looks like that, you need something a bit different to happen. What you need is when the ammonites died, you need a limestone nodule, a ball of rock to form around it. And the ball of rock protects the middle of the ammonite from the weight and it remains hollow. Thousands of years and water circulate, uh, soaks down through the overlying rock and it has dissolved calcite in it, calcium carbonate. And this calcite crystallizes in the internal chambers and fills up all the middle part of the ammonite. Hopefully, 
we come along 200 million years later and we split the rock open but when we remove the layer of rock not only does the rock come off but the line of weakness is between the smooth inside of the shell and the calcite and mud that's filled it so we take off the shell of the ammonite as well so when you look at the ammonites in the shops and in the museums you're looking at the internal fill which is why when you look at a lot of these ammonites you'll see a lovely dark outer coil and you'll see a light colored center and the dark outer coil is the mud that's filled up the outer part of the ammonite and the light colors can be white or yellow or brownish orange color is the calcite crystal that's formed in the center part of the ammonite Many of the nodules at Lion Reed just contain no ammonites at all. Even if you pick the good nodules, probably one in only about half a dozen nodules will have something preserved in it. But some of them can be much more spectacular than that. Some of them you can get things like this. This is an awful lot of ammonites all washed in together and you can get even bigger and more spectacular pieces than this. But what's caused these ammonites to all be together is the brown line running down the middle and that's a piece of fossil wood it's part of a log or a root or a branch of a tree that washed into the sea from nearby land floated around for a while got waterlogged and sank and the ammonites have been washed up against the side of it and it's possible to find large nodules with big pieces of wood and hundreds of ammonites all washed up together and if you can see the edge of the piece of wood on the nodule that gives you an idea that that might have happened and often rocks like that are better not hit with a hammer but taken back and carefully prepared.